Hey, welcome everybody. This is Jeff Duden, and we are on the home front with Clemson standout linebacker Ben Bulware. Welcome, Ben. Good morning and happy Wednesday. I would say has been. You got like I'm still playing. It's been was it seven years now? So mm -hmm. form, former former say former has been old guy. Ball. Hey, Wednesday's uh, uh, Wednesday's pads day, right? So we'd be we'd be we'd be we'd be popping pads today. Tuesday, well, um, Wednesday Tuesdays were full pad. Tuesdays really sucked. Wednesdays, <laughs> uh, it was either hit or miss. We would go full pads, or we'd go shells. Thursdays yeah. would definitely be like a walk through shells type deal. We had Tuesdays and Wednesdays are are tough days. Yeah. Yeah. Thursdays, sudden change, specials, all right. that shells. Praise, praise God. Yeah. Monday, yep. Monday, Mon Mondays, Coach Swinney would talk for three hours. And I was telling somebody the other day, like when you're 18, 19 years old, you probably aren't aware of just the wisdom that is being just spewed at you. Because I remember just like, I need to get out of here. This dude will not stop talking. But now I'm just like, I would pay a lot of money to sit in those mental Mondays and let listen to him talk for 90 minutes. It was, well, isn't that interesting that you got it for free for all free. those years and people pay him a hundred grand to come give it to him for an hour or whatever they pay him. I was talking about that <laughs> the other day, like how we just got it for free from Sweeney and from, from Venables and, and just how elite, like creme de la creme leaders that they currently they were currently are, and those guys take it for granted. And just obviously college football, this is a, a can go into a long conversation of where college football currently is. But if some of those guys and me back then would have just stepped back and realized the wise counsel that we had, that, I mean, that's top zero, zero, like per 1% of, of leadership that those two guys were, it's just elite. Yeah. I don't know, Coach Sweeney, uh, but the perception from the outside is that he, he holds the locker room. Uh, culture stays good. Um, everybody participates. And as a result of that, you know, tremendous success for the program over the years. Yeah. What the public perceives of, of Coach Sweeney is what we saw. I mean, it doesn't get any better with, from a definitely from a coaching standpoint, but like from a, a leadership from a wise counsel, from a husband, from a father, Christian standpoint, he just got it. Like he's just made of the right stuff. And yeah. you had, I know Clemson fans are been pissed over the past couple of years because it has been. We like haven't been playing at the level that we should be. And everyone just if a a team starts to suck, you want to go to the head. Someone's got to get the blame for it. And I will to my grave, it ain't him. Like I'm telling you, y'all just knew what the guy was made of. Like there's so many other dynamics to college football that are causing issues, but he is the top of the top. Him and Venables. Like, yeah, I, I got a question though. Do you guys ever take bets on whether he's going to tumble down that hill prior to the game? Because I watch him yeah. run down that hill, and I'm just, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for him to, to just eat has. it. But he never does. I've only seen one guy, a freshman linebacker, when my senior year hit, hit the little jump and snapped his ankle in half and it's i guess it was it was kind of funny then uh, even though it was actually a bad injury the guy was kind of a, a goober and he tried to be cool and jump like a, this little lip at the bottom um but yeah almost every game you'll see someone roll the roll an ankle because they just get <laughs> a little too confident so yeah yeah he is a he's a good athlete though so i don't think he's i wouldn't put money on that well, I've been in, uh, it's one of the better in bowl experiences. My daughter graduated from Clemson and now I've got a son at Virginia tech. And if you go to both of those, uh, game days, those are two great, great in bowl experiences. Right. Clemson yeah. is, you know, and they let everybody on the field after the game at Clemson, that's kind of trust and uh, inclusion that, uh, you know, the team wants and, and, uh, it's just, a, it's a real special place. Um, my daughter had an incredible experience there. Uh, she loved watching you play. Uh, she really did. So, uh, you number 10, my son was number 10. He was a linebacker. So like we oh. always, when I, anytime I saw 10 flying around, I had a little flashback to, you know, he played, he played over at Elon and, uh, was Sweet. a great high school player, but, uh, well, Hey Ben, let's, um, uh, you know, 
I'd love to, to know a little bit. Of, I don't know that much about how you grew up. Can you tell us a little bit who is Ben Bulware? So Ben Bulware is someone that grew up in an awesome just family upbringing. Like I, I know everyone says like oh, their parents are the best. Like from my point of view, like just our up, upbringing and family raising was, and I, I'm aware of that now as I'm in the season of raising a, a 10 month old son Congratulations. Wife, and multiple people are like asking you like, Hey, how are you going to do this? How are you going to handle this? And I'm just like, I'm going to try to my best to do it exactly how my parents did it. Yeah. Because we grew up in a super loving environment, but an extremely tough environment. You know, you have, I have an older brother that played uh, baseball at Clemson. He's two years older than me. I have a little sister who's uh, roughly 14, 15 months younger than me. And I have a little brother who is three or four uh, years younger than us. There's four of us. So three boys, one girl. Um, my dad started a con concrete company when he was probably 24, 25 and still runs the company. So we grew up in a, a concrete environment. We grew up racing motocross. Um, we were homeschooled until roughly middle school. Uh, but my mom, it was a combination of we were homeschooled because my parents are old school uh, are not fans of the public uh, school system. And also okay. we raced uh, motocross pretty competitively. Like we traveled a good bit across the South. Every weekend we were either in Florida, in Virginia, or North Carolina um, racing. So the fact that my parents like, didn't really like the public school system and the curriculum, along with us being very competitive in motocross, we were homeschooled. Uh, I ended up having a pretty bad wreck uh, through motocross that kind of like, hey, this sport's too expensive. It's too dangerous. We're going to transition into public school. Uh, it's probably a good time from like a social standpoint. And then let's transition into football. It's much uh, safer than, than motocross. So, yeah, we grew up super tight-knit family. We have a, a pretty big family in the upstate. Everyone lives pretty closely. Um, I have a lot of cousins that are all uh, pretty good athletes that are close to our age. So the the upbringing was as good as it gets, you know. So yeah. um, growing up in Anderson, South Carolina, and then getting to play college sports 20 minutes on the road, I mean, it really doesn't get – for some people, some people are like, I want to go across the world and get away right. from the family. I'm like, I love my family. <laughs> my parents are some of my best friends. Like I, we have family dinners still to this day, every single week. So I was thinking about going to Georgia. Okay. Clemson wasn't going to offer me a scholarship because I'm the six foot white guy down the road. They know that once they offer me his brothers there, his grandpa played football there. We know if we offer this kid, he's going to come. So yeah. they were playing hardball which pissed me off because I'm like, dude, I was the number two per ESPN was the number two rated linebacker in the country. Like I know y'all know who I am. Um, I had Stanford. Stanford was my second scholarship. And then uh, South Florida and Stanford were my first scholarships in high school. And I'm just like, these freaking meatheads down the road won't pull the trigger. Right. And finally they did uh, after Georgia did. I remember being in Mark Rick's office with my dad crying when he pulled the trigger, because that was a super cool experience. Yeah. Mark Rick obviously is a, a coaching legend. And then a week later, Clemson pulled the trigger because I started playing hard. I started playing politics. I'm like, hey, I'm maybe a bulldog. And um, finally they offered. I committed within seven seconds. And then obviously, <laughs> oh, so that was the target, right? You were you were you were focused on that. Or sure. Yeah. That since yeah. day one. Most of my brother was playing ball there. My parents went there. My little sister ended up going there. All my cousins went there. Bull mm -hmm. wears are are Clemson folk. So when they pulled the trigger, obviously committed on the spot. And then yeah, had a pretty fun Clemson career. Which we can Yeah, a few through. highlights. Uh of course, uh, college football uh, playoff national champions 2016. You also got the Jack Lambert Trophy. 
college football uh, playoff, uh, the national championship defensive MVP, uh, co-defensive player of the year in 16, first team all CC 2016. Just, just an incredible uh, career. And again, I, you know, you were a standout to us as we were watching the games and, you know, just the way you flew around and the way you showed up at the point of attack, uh, always, you know, shoulder square and uh, delivering some, uh, you know, delivering good thump. So uh, really enjoyed watching you play and, uh, and, and the way you did it. Um, what did you learn uh, from the, the experience at Clemson that you think will help you as you uh, continue your entrepreneurial career? Uh, you've got a, a junkyard fitness now, which is uh, a gym that you started right there in Clemson. Uh, and I don't know what your plans are going after that, but um, you're, you're in the junkyard. By the way, um, I, I'll share with you. I shared with you. My daughter went to Clemson. Uh, she graduated there in accounting. She got a 4.0. Um, she's in law school at NYU. She got accepted. So she's a first year law student at NYU. And yet she applied for a job uh, at your uh, company and was turned down. So I'm not sure. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, she had to go over to F, she had to go over to F forty five. Did she really? Yeah, that's, I think so. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's, that's that. Funny. Did she say why? No, Maybe. I don't know. I I just I don't I don't know what it was. Uh, I don't know what it was about. But um, anyway, you know, Bailey. Yeah. So I can, so I just quickly looked up her profile. So one of the things that we, and I don't know any, cause I've never met with your daughter. Um, one of the things that we make applicants do uh, throughout the onboarding process is do at least 10 classes before, okay. they, before they get to my interview. So I look on her profile. Uh, she's only done two classes and she ain't been in All two. Right. So, but because people will see something on social media or marketing. And I feel like we do a, a really good job from a marketing standpoint. Like, Oh, this place looks super cool. I want to work there. And we're like, okay, well you need to come actually try this place out to see if it's something you like, because Instagram and in reality is a little bit different. So we make applicants do before they get through the onboarding process, 10 classes. Oh, that's a good idea. Just to Great make sure, hey, did you actually like this place? Because right, it is, like you have to be pretty bought in to become one of our team members because we ask a lot of the people on our team. So we know that if, or for the most part, if someone will invest their time, energy, and not money because we give those 10 to them for free. Um, sure. But if they will commit to doing those 10 classes before the onboarding process is done, we, we feel – uh, pretty strongly that they kind of check the, 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 we call them the four C's. And one of those C's we look for when we hire someone is, do they feel called to be in the industry? And we know nice. that if they feel called or care about it. They're probably, they'll easily do 10. So yeah, I don't know. What are the other, what are the other three C's? So the other ones are character, uh, competency, chemistry, and then called and care. So we obviously want high character folks. Love um, it. Love it. We need anyone that's perfect uh, because I'm not perfect and I make a million mistakes. We want people that are obviously running a, a pretty similar race. Uh, competency. We obviously want people that are competent that can do the job at a high level. Me and my business partner, Marcus Brown, who I played football with, are two meatheads and we can't afford <laughs> to have any other meatheads on the team. Uh, chemistry is obviously a big deal to us. Like, do they fit in with the team? We do a lot of, like, if you ask any of our, uh, we call them junkies. Uh, across the upstate, like a lot of those people will speak on culture. And that's like, sounds cliche, but I like, that's one of the things we really, really focus about, like on the, like the community, the chemistry of the one, our team, but also our clients. And we do a lot of it, like just team events. And if someone like, we know that they're not going to fit in well with the team, like we're just almost like they're, they're weird or just like, aren't going to mesh well. Hey, like right. you're probably not going to like working with our team if you're not friends with the team. So chemistry is a real, real big deal. Um, we do team dinners, team outings, one-on-ones pretty much every single month. And then the last one is uh, called cared. Like do they feel called to, to be in the industry? So uh, I imagine your daughter uh, is an, an incredible woman, but <laughs> he only did two classes. So she was, well, hey, look, you got to check the box. Yeah. She didn't, uh, if she didn't do the, those 10, 
Hey, I'm sure she's great, but she ain't getting thrown. <laughs> she's, she's, right. she's great. She's yeah. great. She's just not. She's not great right there. She's probably That's fine. Qualified. If she's at NYU, she is overqualified. Well, she's like, job. <laughs> yeah, she's teaching. Uh, she's teaching classes there. Uh, core power yoga. So yeah, she's. Yeah. Um, she loves the fitness stuff, and it's it's a you know big part of. Uh, what she does, but so, so junkyard, like what's, um, who's the client, what are the goals and what's the workout? So the, I'll start with a little bit of history and then the workout. So me and I have a business partner named Marcus Brown. He played safety at Newberry and then his grad year came to Clemson. Uh, me and my roommate for four years at Clemson was his childhood best friend. So if we were playing on different weekends, he would come into town, sleep on our couch. So that's kind of how we got close. Once we closed the door with football, I'm like, hey, dude, I have this idea about this hit studio, but doing it to music. And I could dive really, really deep into the history. But I know we have a, a time limit. Um, pretty much, he went to school for nursing. And if you know Marcus Brown, he is not a nurse. So he's just like, <laughs> I don't want to go to nursing. Let's do it. So we opened up our first uh, location in 2018 in downtown Anderson, because I imagine that, hey, if this product sucks, at least I'm the hometown kid and people will give me a pity uh, membership or a pity support. And um, luckily it didn't suck and we treated people the right way, uh, opened up our second location in Greenville in the West Village, like five oh, minutes outside of downtown in May of 2020. Uh, so looking back, yeah. probably yeah. the worst time in the world to open up a business. And uh, we got through it. We didn't lose any money. Uh, we didn't make any money. But we did not close down, didn't uh, have to let anyone go. Um, That's great. Kept the doors open. It was for sure tough. And then you op- operate a small business at 24, 25 years old in a global pandemic. That'll force you to adapt and get creative. So we finally got out of COVID. 2021 was good for us. And in 2022, we opened up our third location in downtown Clemson. Okay. Uh, and then – in October of this past year, we opened up our fourth spot in Malden Simpsonville uh, in a development called Bridgeway. Yeah. Um, so we have four spots right now, have roughly 70 people on our team. Uh, this is why I'm bald at 29 years old uh, because of all this. Um, but it's awesome. Like, obviously, I love the workout and I'll get into it. Um, but also just like leading people and like the relationship side of it is what Mm. is really, really fun for me. And then just growing a business that's like been bootstrapped, like me and Marcus bootstrapped this mug. It was just us two. Like I had like a lot of wise counsel with, with my parents who started their own company when he was my, like roughly my age, but there ain't no like big money or like big backing behind it is me and Marcus and a lot of good folk that have just like been wise counsel for us to allow us to help us make wise decisions. Um, so the workout, uh, we're trying to get away from being called a hit studio because some okay. people love that. Some people hate that verbiage. You're like, Oh, we hate hit, blah, 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 blah. It's all cardio. So we're trying to go into this verbiage from a rebranding stand standpoint, uh, a functional fitness studio. So it's again, like, it's a workout. You're moving your body. Um, but I feel like for people that like care about that type of uh, workout classes, boutiques type stuff, the verbiage matters. So if you really put out that you're a hit studio, again, some will love it. Some will just totally scare them off. Sure. So a functional fitness studio, we there's three things that kind of separate us. First thing is the format of the workout. So we're the only studio that I know of that uses treadmills, cycles, rowers and then a functional lifting station so there's typically okay. four stations in the workout in uh, every workout you use all those not, all not the- every workout some days okay. like uh yesterday we did an all mat workout so we didn't use any machines it was all mats so we pride yeah. ourselves in not being all cardio because some people love that some people don't so we want to be typically straddle the line of 50 50 where most on an average day, you'll have 50% cardio, 50% functional movements, lifting. So like yesterday, it was all functional movements, which our clients are are loving. You, you're getting this vibe in the world about, uh, like I follow Nick Bear. So this whole hybrid athlete, like 
the running and, and lifting. So we just are kind of doing that, but along with a little cycling and, and rowing as well, because those are obviously great, great workouts. So those four stations and the average normal junkyard workout, run, ride, row, and then we say rage because it's uh, good marketing. Okay. All, all, all ours. The second thing that kind of separates us is we made this music software that allows us to work out to the interval of music. So we'll plug in this audio file. This is going to be, it's very difficult to explain this without a visual. Um, it's super simple from a visual standpoint. Like my brother who has autism has done a hundred classes and he understands how the flow works because it's so simple. Um, but when the beat, We'll plug in an audio file and this uh, it's essentially it's our logo with like a green background. When the beat and the music has not dropped, the screen and the room is completely green. So we call it your pace zone. So if you're on the treadmill, we say it's like 60 to 70 percent of your max heart rate. You're walking. If you're on the bikes, you're at a slow ride. If you're on the row, you're at a slow like row cadence. OK, when the beat and the music drops. And when you naturally would already pick up your pace. Because there's like a scientific study that when I'm, if I'm uh, doing a presentation to companies to try to get them to get a corporate membership, I'll show sure. them the study. But like if you're running and the beat and the music drops or picks up, you naturally just start picking it up, running a little faster. So all right. we've done is create a visual for that. So the whole room will then turn to red when the beat drops. So now if you're running on the treadmill or if you're walking on green, you'd be running on red. Yeah. And if you're colorblind, you're going from gray to gray. <laughs> if you're colorblind, <laughs> uh, it might be. We actually have some, um, one of our coaches is colorblind. And we've, all right. uh, my, Marcus, who uh, trains all of our coaches, has found a way to um, figure that out. But yeah, if yeah. you're colorblind, it makes it a little bit difficult. Uh, well, we then have, you, you, got, you still got the music. Yeah, we found a way to, to make it happen. All right. We do all the workouts to music. Uh, this is a software that that we've created. You won't find it anywhere else because nice. it came out of me and Marcus's butt, pretty much. Third thing yeah. that separates us is the coaching. So the same way that me and Marcus were coached at Clemson by Coach Venables is in a professional way uh, and a less cussing way how we coach our clients. I felt like okay. there was a gap in this category of fitness uh, when it comes to intentional uh, coaching. So an acronym that we uh, use at our business is so the acronym coach. So call out and call hire. Uh, we like in the training process, really, really hammer that home. Like you can't call someone higher and challenge them if you don't know how to call them out and know how to know their name. So like we yeah. really like that's one of the things I had to interview on Monday. And hey, this is the three non-negotiables that like I really, really care about that I'm never going to kind of pivot from. First thing is names. Like we are going to address every single person by name. It's the sweetest sound in any language to that person is their name. Second thing is cleanliness. Third thing is communication. Like you're going to communicate at a high level if you're on our team. But you can't call someone higher if you don't know, like your name's Jeff. Like how am I going to um, lovingly, criticize you like if i'm are going to give you feedback like bro you don't even know my name you know so right. we coach our clients at a really really high level it's obviously with love and respect but if you go to one of our classes or your daughter went to one of our classes and the coach knew hey maylee she can run at seven to eight miles per hour and she's going in there dogging it at four our coach hey baby girl <laughs> Eight, yeah. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're going to press it for, and I should not hurt anybody, but that doesn't happen in this like category of business. It's all rainbows and daisies, and everyone's doing a great job, and right. a lot of times they're not, and they need to be coached better. So those are kind of the three things that separate us uh, from a workout, and just our company is the run, ride, row, rage, the music, and then the the coaching that we do. That is uh, the junkyard. Awesome. And is it all uh, group fitness or do you have personal training as well? Uh, so you have 99.9% uh, group. You'll have, we can get up to 40 people in a class, which okay. are, is really fun. Uh, we, ha we have like a higher tier membership uh, called Junkyard Plus that will give these folks that are on this uh, membership like one uh, individual coaching session a month, like with Marcus. So okay. 
99.9% of the other stuff is all group though. We're not. All right. And then how long is the, how long is the class? 45 minutes, 45 minutes. Yeah. yeah so that's plenty, plenty to get it done. What? About what a three minute warm up, three minute cool down and exactly. everything 40, else is getting after it. 40 roughly minutes of chaos. Yeah. Chaos, utter chaos, utter chaos. Yes, I love sir. it. I love it. Four stores, all company owned. So I've been involved in two different fitness things over the years. So, which um, one you speak on? Uh, it? Uh, so Burn Boot Camp. Oh yeah, come on, let's go, y'all. Um, yeah, they're everywhere. But uh, Devin and Morgan walked into a building that I had for rent when they were working in a parking lot, and uh, I rented them the space. Uh, we became friends, and uh, we, you know, talked to them about franchising when they decided they wanted to do it. Uh, so they're good friends of mine. And you, um, you were the, give me more on that. I was well informed on, on burn boot camp. Um, there wasn't like, there's, there's one in Anderson, there's one in Greenville. Yeah. Uh, in Seville, so some of our main, the workouts very, very different. And I would even say yeah. mine tells a little bit different, but same yeah. model. So you were like one of the starting guys. Please. Give well, me- so I wasn't uh, not an owner in any way, but just more of a advisor, mentor and friend um, cool. because I was already in franchising. And then I rented them a space. Uh, they didn't have any credit. They didn't have any money. They had been turned down for leases. And I'm like, well, and what I, the reason that I uh, believed in Devin so much is because when I asked him, I said, why do you do what you do? His per- his sense of purpose was so clear. He goes, I'm going to build a fit boot camp for, for moms and I'm going to be the first billion dollar trainer. Cool. And like that, he you know, and like he the, the starters of it. Yeah. Him and his wife at, cool. at the time. I, I don't, yeah, I think they were either engaged or they were, I think they were married at the time. So I rented them a place. They did all the work themselves. They started it. And then two years later they were, uh, wanted to franchise. So we, you know, so we, we, we had some sessions together and I just shared what I knew about it. And yeah. over the years, yeah, we're good friends. And then I also, um, started, uh, I, I actually acquired a business with two locations called Rockbox Fitness. <laughs> I know exactly that. That literally one of their, uh, are you still involved with them? Um, I own a few. I own a couple studios. Gotcha. That we, we that, that's yeah. Cool. So Good work stuff. work with them. So that's also a different kind of workout. Um, but uh, yeah, so I've been same, around the same category though. Roughly same. That's all booty group fitness. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, so been in around a little bit on the franchise side. So what's your are are you gonna are you consider franchising this? Or are you gonna keep it company owned? So this is a great question. Great question. So we've dabbled <laughs> in this a lot. A lot over the past year. Yeah. So how can I, I'll tell you everything. I don't, that don't bother me at all. So I won't get too, like I won't do names and stuff. But so we had um, probably at the beginning of last year, uh, I'll call it a PE firm. Um, they pretty much are a company that work with uh, small businesses that are roughly our size, like five mm-hmm. to 10 units and, and scale them. So we'll just say a PE firm for lack of a, a better, like clear explanation on, on, on who they are. Started working with them over the past year. Um, good folk, like uh, some, definitely some wise, we didn't sign any like deal, uh, but like, those initial like, hey, this these six months, we're going to create a growth plan for y'all. Um, and then pretty much it's just like over the past couple months, um, kind of just died and fell off. Like I haven't heard yeah. from them. Um, so they're t- the two guys that I dealt with. They're like the two owners of the thing are like good people, cool folk. I don't have the bad to say about them, but hadn't heard from them in a couple months. Yeah. So they're watching this. They know I'm not lying. Um, but I'm interested in doing it. Cause I'm just, I'm aware like to get good margins in this business, like the, your margins increase if you do it the right way and are obviously super um, careful with obviously who you're working with, what market you're going into. We know what, what market works really sure. well for us. Um, then yes, like you can probably get to where you currently are one day. Like you have to, like you're fine with four, but you want to create some family maybe generational wealth, like yeah. you got to do what burn boot camp do, like and get resources from other areas. So uh, I'm interested in doing it. Um, I'm building my house right now. We got our CO yesterday. So over the past, I'd probably say like end of Q, Q4, uh, January, February, I've been super too involved with building our house because I'm the one that's building it. 
Um, but now since we got our CEO yesterday, we're about to move in. I can get really back into the weeds of just growing the business the right way. Um, nice. So, yes, long-winded way to say that we are, but I want to be super, super careful. Um, like I've met with a lot of people that are in leadership at Chick-fil-A because – like they, I, there's a way to scale and not do it too fast. Like Chick Fil A's done it the right way, you know, and they've right. been super careful. Like for the most part, you can go to a Chick Fil A anywhere, and hey, my pleasure, or it's going to be an incredible experience. So, I've met with a lot of their their leadership. I met with a guy that's in the process of opening his own, and it's been like a year long process for him in the interview just to open his own store. So. I know that there's a way to do it at a slow enough cadence where as you scale from four to maybe 40, hey, the the same way that we operate this Anderson location that it was the day one is the same way we'll open up this 40th location wherever. Like you can't really tell a difference. And I want to yeah. be just careful about that because I know that can destroy a business and destroy a reputation. So Yes, again, long-winded way to say I am interested in it. And this, um, honestly, uh, over Q2, Q3, Q4 of this year, or when we'll probably start having conversations again, um, not sure. Uh, we're not, like, legally tied down to anything. Uh, so it is a yeah. junkyard, junkyard is open for business. And well, there's very, there's different ways to grow, grow a business and you got to consider all your options. Right. If you ever um, want to be introduced to some interesting people um, in the franchise space to continue to round out your thinking, just let me know. Right. Um, there's a lot of people. Um, franchising is a very a collaborative and tight community. Right. And, you know, we're particularly interested in the industry about expanding the reach and relevance of that business model. We think it's the greatest wealth creation business model ever invented. And when you find good people that have a business, um, there's a lot of people it, like in any business that, you know, will consult with you or charge you dollars or things like that. But maybe they can't get you all the way there. So you have to you do have to be careful with, you know, who you get to help you uh, on, on all of that stuff. But generally, when you find good people that have good businesses and they're looking to grow uh, a business, uh, you, you, you always want to collaborate and help because we want to make sure that the franchise industry maintains the highest standards possible. Right. And it does no, and even though we might be competitors and it like, you know, Devin and I, man, we're great friends and that's all it's, it's been, we've done some business deals together, but I never participated in burn. I just, with Rockbox, though. I just helped them. And then, you right. know, with Rockbox, like, but it didn't, our, our relationship didn't even glitch. I mean, it was just, you know, I'm cool. in this space today. I'm not in it tomorrow. You know, life and business are infinite games. And, you know, you spend your whole life, Ben, you will spend your whole life searching and looking for those, those few people that you can truly trust Right. for those few people that will really cheer for you when you do well, regardless, uh, that will be unselfish in their care for you and, you know, the way that they want you to succeed. And I think, and I've learned in my career that people will give you $10 for every dollar that you can take from them. And, you know, it's not only... Uh, to give back, but you need to give first. And, you know, those are some things that, that I've learned in business that, um, you know, and you stick to those things and sometimes you get burned just like with employees. Sometimes you get hurt because you trusted too much, but at the end of the day, man, you can't, you, 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 you really will go farther if you can surround yourself with a group of people, um, that discretionary effort, that care. It's the football team and I'm a football player. I played, I didn't, I, so I played it. So I had a day at Clemson in 1990, by the way, here's my Clemson story. Uh, I was a starting, I was a senior year. I was a starting fullback at Appalachian state university. Clemson was number five ranked defense in the country. Uh, there was a guy on the edge called Levon Kirkland. Boy. And, uh, you know, probably I think he was I think he was among the first 260 to 270 pound linebackers in the NFL, like that big body linebacker. And they lined him up on the end of the line and we ran toss option. So he Boy. was mine all day long. Like, I, oh. you know, he was a beast. I got him down on the ground like one. I got him down on the ground a couple of, you know, a couple of times. But, cool. you know, generally uh, we lost that game 50 to nothing. And, uh, it was, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was close. I mean, you know, the, it was, it was close in the first half, but so, so I was a captain and I'm walking out of the tunnel and I'm, I'm, you know, in the front of the line and we just pause there at the tunnel to, uh, you know, for whatever reason, the way to go out and the state trooper 
who was standing there, turned around, put his face right in my face mask and said, you all are getting ready to get your noses bloodied. And I'm like, right. even the cops. <laughs> hey, all right. Thank you for the encouragement. Yeah. Even the cops here. We don't, you know, and, uh, but you know, there was 77, 77,000 people that day. You know, right. I was a Jew, Ju- I was a Juco kid. I wasn't a great player. And just to be able to walk out in that environment, walk out on the field. Um, I think we received the kickoff. I was in the front middle of the kickoff line. So, you know, I was out there for the, out there for the kickoff and, yeah. you know, played the game at fullback and, you know, and we did, you know, we did okay, man, but like we didn't have the speed and we didn't have the depth. And right. it was just, you did, you guys just kept waves of people coming on the field, just, you know, uh, but, you know, App State's not a bad program. We've done well over the years. Great, um, great program. Yeah, we know how to, we know how to win there and, uh, you know, very proud of the school and, and proud uh, to be a part of that with Coach Moore. But, yes, sir. Um, well, I, last uh, thing I want to talk to you about, and, uh, and then, you know, we got a couple, I got two questions left for you. Number one, um, you, gr- you grew up in a family, you, you, uh, obviously a tight family. What's it like for you being a father? So much fun. Ah, it's so much fun. It is extremely challenging. So where we've been is in this, so I'm in our little garage apartment right now. So we built this, uh, we've got a three car garage with a little studio apartment above it. And me and my wife have been in it for the past two years. And it's fine with you and your wife. You introduce a little nine, 10 month old uh, crackhead little boy. It makes it (laughs) a little bit more difficult when he's sleeping in the living room. You got to put him down at seven o'clock. You got to just go in your room and stay there till the, the following day. So it definitely has been a challenge. He didn't sleep till about six months. And mm. the number one way to screw up a person's head and just body in general is eliminate them of sleep. So right. for the first six months, me and my wife suffered uh, a good bit. And then once he learned how to roll on his face, then it just was nights out for him. But so much fun. We're getting into a really cool season where he's like, not talking yet, just making a bunch of noises. He crawls around like a little bug. He's close to walking, but uh, just so much fun. And but yes, yeah, it definitely is a challenge. It's is he a uh, big kid. His head's big. I got a <laughs> I got a noggin. So his head's like in the 99th percentile. But <laughs> everything else is he's average as grits. But uh, he's uh, ten months old, so we got a little time. Uh, but we once we get into that season where he's a little over a year old. I'm gonna start putting old buddy through some drills. Yeah, he'll be training. training not coordination, but yeah, just so much fun. Uh, it'll definitely teach you uh, how to be uh, selfless. It's like gone are the days that are about you or your wife. It's just yeah, all about him right now. Well, so, I'll tell you, Ben. You know this because you grew up uh, with a father who was an entrepreneur, but. You giving uh, your uh, son exposure to entrepreneurship at a young age will give them an entirely different paradigm of the way they think about things and self-reliance. So, you know, and one indicator of future success as an entrepreneur is whether they had an early entrepreneur exposure experience early in life. Yep. So, you know, it'll, it'll, you know, I know like I had my son uh, when I was building this, this business or the my previous business. And I mean, he'd come to work with me. He'd sleep on a moving blanket under my desk, man. We ha- we'd go to lunch, you know. He'd four or five years old. We just hold hands and walk across the parking lot and go get some uh, fried trout and French fries. I mean, it's I, those are some of the best memories. Uh, so you've got all that uh, right in front of you. So congratulations on that. I know you're going to be a great dad, and uh, hope uh, hope you have as many as you want. Lord will. Um, yeah. You know, um, about, we're about to get in the house. I'm like let's let's run it back. She's like, I need to breathe. Like, no. I'm like, come on, dude. I grew up with four in our family. So, yeah, my uh, older brother already just had his third. And he's 31. Nice. Um, he wants to have like six, seven. I'd like, Lord bless us with three or four, and we'll be good with that. But my wife's putting her foot down right now. So, ultimately, wow. it's a good decision. <laughs> but I'm pushing. Yeah, well. Things happen. You get, you get, you, <laughs> you'll, 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 you'll get exactly the number you're, you're meant to have. For sure. um, last question, Ben, if you had uh, one sentence to speak into somebody's life, what might that be? Golly. So one of the things that 
I've been saying for 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 years, and I said it when we won the national championship is like on on that stage was our team can control the input all year, all season, all night, and the output took care of itself. And for me, that's like worked in my personal life, worked in football, it's worked in my relationships and and uh, business. It is controlling the input, not the output. So nice for me, just like controlling the controllables, control the things that are in my grasp that I can actually uh, control. And not if if I do that day in day out, continue to toil the soul. Um, more times than not, the the fruit will happen and the output will will work in my favor. So I feel like sometimes you need luck. You know, but more times than not, it's how much work you can consistently and daily put in. So for me, that's been something that I've tried to to live by is controlling the input day in, day out. And if I do that, hey, whether the output works in my favor or not, I can go to sleep at night knowing that I did my duty. I tried, you know, I told the yeah. soul to ah. control the input, not the output. Well, brilliant. Thank you for sharing that. And Ben, it has been awesome to get to know you a little bit. I'm so excited for your business and really appreciate appreciate you coming on the home front today uh, with us. How can people get in touch with you or your business? So our probably the best way is through Instagram. So our Instagram is at the junkyard fitness. Uh, our business is just called the junkyard. We added fitness on the end of it, uh, like on our website, because uh, it was five dollars to buy that URL at uh, www.thejunkyard was like four thousand dollars. So I'm a frugal businessman. So it's just called the junkyard, but online and on Instagram is at the junkyard fitness. Um, we're extremely active on social. So uh, following us on there, uh, we have a pretty creative. I won't spill the beans on our our marketing tactics, but. Uh, Give us a follow on uh, on Instagram, and someone on our team might be reach, reaching out to you very, very soon. And then uh, my Instagram is just at Ben Boulware. My social media sucks. All it is is I have three St. Bernards that are s- extremely stupid. And then uh, my hairy little 10-month-old son is pretty much all <laughs> I post on social media. So I've seen it. All the junk I've seen it. Yeah. Ben Boulware. This has been awesome, and um, I'm Jeff Duden. We've been on the home front with Ben Bulware. Ben, thanks for being on, and everybody out there, thanks for listening.